Just that's unfortunate this tournament is run on a uh, on a non-FIFA date. You know, you've got to remember we've got the Chan tournament coming up as well. Uh, you know, there's going to be a situation there. Uh, the Nelson Mandela day, there's going to be a day when we play in a match where there's not a FIFA weekend, you know. So I'm sure that, you know, with negotiations, we'll get these things right. But this tournament is a tough tournament. And not only have I suffered, but the whole of uh, all the other coaches have had this problem before. You know, before the coach, Pizzo had the same problem. Pereira had the same problem. And it's, it's something that we need to sit down and say, how important is this tournament to us? You know, because at the moment it's, you know, this is our senior national team going to go. Play. I think this tournament is important. Obviously, not because, in the sense that it's, if it's run on a FIFA date, it would be perfect because it is an opportunity for us to put in some youngsters. Okay, and I think it's very important because we've got a master plan that we're going to follow. And I've told, I said this before, we're going to stick to this master plan. And it's important that we develop our players for 2015 and 2018. The whole squad, in actual fact, come 2018 should be coming from our under 17s, 20s, 23s, and and blood these players in. And we're going to stick to that. But unfortunately, in this tournament, there's a lot of the players that should be there or aren't there. I haven't even mentioned their names. I mean, I, I can mention names that just were just not available. So I didn't even call them up. And, and I know people are asking, oh, why didn't we call this one? Why didn't we call that one? But I mean, Sibasisa Villakazi was never called up because I really got to know. Uh, Zunga, uh, Rama, uh, Impalela, George Malulueka, uh, Granwell Scott, Maribanya, uh, Meshecho Katlecho, Chapman and many others. I, I just didn't even call them up. And some, sometimes some of the journalists say, I wonder why didn't he call up Meshecho? I think I went to every single player. We were running out of players. To be honest with you, we were running out of players at the end of the day. The players have arrived today. The first time I've seen them. Some of them I had to make sure it was this player or that player because you recognize the players on the field because you know exactly who this player is and where he plays. But when you see him in person in a tracksuit, he's a little bit different, you know. So there's five or six players I should put name tags on to, to remind me who they are. But, but at the end of the day, we haven't had a training session. What we've done in the last year is spent a year trying to form an identity, a playing style of football, which is the reason why in the beginning I, I named maybe uh, 10 of those players who are part of, of, of my up over the last year it introduced 10 new players and that would have been the ideal situation because those 10 players and the youngsters coming through would have learned from these guys they would have known when this player's gone here where the right back has to be when the ball's over there where the left hand side midfield player has to be so these players from from before are, are programmed now and they know how we play this is a completely new team we haven't had a training session with them they just this 20 players that are going to be going onto the field for the first time tomorrow and i'm going to try and get all this into them and you can't do too much in one day um yes we we will have a good game plan. Tactically, we'll be very aware. We know our opposition. But at the end of the day, we're not going to be a machine. We're not going to go out there because the players are going to make mistakes. I mean, I mentioned just now six or seven names that one would expect to be playing in the, in, in the World Cup in 2018. They're not even here. I can name 15 players to you on here who could play possibly in the 50, uh, 20, uh, 2018 World Cup. But these guys I've got here are talented players. They play for Premier League teams. Some of them are not regulars. Some of them are regulars. So the opportunity now is for them to put their hands up and say, you know what, let's show uh, the coach, let's show South Africa that we can't play and we are we are here and I'm hoping that happens you know I think we will we will definitely be competitive we'll be very competitive the guys will play a lot of passion they'll play a lot of commitment but whether we can get it right in, in just two days uh, it's, it's very difficult completely new I don't think any players have played together I know my left back and my right back and my center backs will be totally new never been on the field together besides our training session and that goes right through the whole team from the midfielders to the wingers to the holy midfield player you know maybe two of them are from the same team in this particular situation that situation but at the end of the day we've been dealt this hand this is what we've got and we're going there in a very positive frame of mind I've never ever been a negative person I'm, I've always been positive about things I'm very happy uh, with the squad obviously there are players who aren't here but that's how it is expectations are always going to be high we just got to go out there and, and understand the situation and let's see and this will this will tell us where we are the expectations are always very high of course no matter when you know no matter who i mean if i if i asked you anybody in here to to select me a better team than i've got right now you're going to come up with all the other names that aren't available these people these players are not available a lot of players are just not available i mean if you think about it you have 10 players withdraw from a team and you replace those 10 with 10 players and of those 10 players you replace them with eight withdraw so you replace those eight and of those eight six withdraw then you replace those six and four withdraw then you replace those four and one withdraws and then of course there's a whole 
15 names that I didn't even call up to replace them because they're just not available when I found out from their clubs. So the circumstances are difficult, you know. So I'm certainly not one, and neither is my technical team or any, anybody in Bafana Bafana will look for any excuses. We've got, we don't want to have excuses. It is what it is. A lot of FIFA weekend, and we go in there and we play as our senior national team. This is our national team, and uh, we would, as I said, we'll be very competitive out there. We'll do our very, very best to win it because the expectations are very high to do that. And uh, let's see what happens. Success would be if five or six players really put their hands up and I can go back and say, Phew, I didn't know this player could do that, or I didn't, or I didn't know the player could do this. That's going to be uh, the success. Winning the competition, uh, if I play your game of chess, I want to win. If I sit down and play your game of tennis, I want to win. That's, that's what I do. I want to win things. I don't want to... Uh, so obviously we gain there, we, we want to win it. I mean, uh, I think we're capable. We're capable of doing it. The only thing that I'm worried about, I'm not worried about the players. I think we've got a lot of talented players, but how are we going to perform as a team? You know, that's what I'm worried about, really, because you can't get everything done in, in one day or two days. There's a lot of situations, tactically, where the player goes, when the fullback left, he must know when to come in, when not to come in, where you've got to be. And these things, are, you know, each team will play a little bit differently because I'll have a player from Ajax, a player from Swallows, a play, and each one of those teams play differently. The right back at that team does this. Now he has to do that. Can he adapt to that quick enough? You know, so that, that's my only worry. But I'm certainly not worried about the, about the ability of the players. I think, I think they, they're very, very talented players. I'm very proud to work with these players. And um, I don't think we should call them second-rate players at all. We've got so much talent in this country that uh, they're just a group of maybe 50 players that are in this. Maybe. I think sometimes people are going to be expecting change too quickly. Okay? We, we, we know what Nigeria have done. A lot of players have come from these. I mean, our own Benny McCarthy came from, uh, from a, a Kasafa tournament where he was a leading goal scorer. And that's what we're hoping to achieve now. We have in the past, and, and, uh, and I think one of the biggest assets or one of the biggest uh, gifts that we've had is the fact that we've identified their problems and we, we're able to sit back and say you know what over the last 10 years we've, we've done all this and it's all been wrong let's change it and we've decided now it's going to change and hopefully it's going to be right in five years or ten years so you'll be asking the same question in three or four years when when other teams like Zambia we say hey you see what South Africa did that's what we should be doing but well, you've got to start somewhere it's not going to just happen like that you've got to start somewhere and we're in the process at the moment you know so you know those are those are things that we've got to look at but you're right, those players did come from the, from the tournament. That's why we want to play in this tournament. All I'm saying is we've got, to, we've got to see how the league is. We've got to sit down, put all the bodies together, all the brains together and say, right, how are we going to... We need to play in the Chan tour, in, in the, in the, in the Kasafa Cup. It's a tournament that we want to participate in. We have had these problems. How are we going to overcome them? Then it's whether the league changes from, from this date to that date, whether there's a break during that course, whether there's going to be a three-week break, whatever. But we need to sit down and talk about it. But we need, I think this is the first time I'm suggesting let's talk about it. Before we never, we, just wait, we play the tournament, everybody moans, nothing gets done. A whole year goes by, next tournament comes. Then all the moaning starts again. No one does anything and everybody carries on, next tournament comes. And we're still back. Now we're saying, let's sit down, all of us. If we want to participate in it, let's participate. I think it's good for the country. It's good for the young players. So let's do it. But how can we fix up these problems? How can we be happy, keep the PSL teams happy? How can we keep the, 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 the software happy? How can we get the players? How are we going to do it? And we need to communicate. Communicate is the most important thing. I think we all sit down and communicate. And that's why I said in the beginning, when I f we need to build relationships. And that's why even now I'm not complaining about the players not being released because I fully understand it. I mean, Gavin Hunt, for example, is a new coach with a new team. He needs his players. He needs uh, Zunga, who's just signed there. He needs, he needs to work with his players. Because in one, one week afterwards, or two weeks afterwards, the first league game's going to start. And if he loses his first league game, he says, well, my team I was with the national team. I couldn't work with these players. Now, they can't, they can't uh, shoot themselves in the foot. So, and they're within their rights. These new players have come into clubs. So I fully understand the situation. What I'm saying is, how do we fix it? How do we fix it so we can all be happy about the situation? It's a great honor for me, and uh, you know, I thank uh, thank Gordon for the faith he's shown in me, and uh, you know, he's obviously seen that I, you know, have the capabilities to lead, and I'm grateful for that, and also for uh, to God for the opportunity. But yeah, I think you know, it's uh, it is the first time for me being captain of the national team. Um, I have had uh, captaincy experience, obviously at club level, but you know, it is a challenge, and it's a great honor for me, and, and I'm really looking forward to the tournament. And, you know, I know that we as, as a country can do well. There's obviously a lot of new faces into the team. But, you know, like the coach said, there's no excuses. At the end of the day, it's South Africa that's playing there. And we as players are going to do our best to go out there, give our all. And that's nothing, there's nothing more we can do. Uh, we're just going to go out there, give our best. Like the coach has said, we all, there's players in there with a wealth of talent. So it's now just a matter of applying ourselves. And uh, we're all positive and, and I'm sure we can, we can do well.
As players, when you come to represent your national team, and you, I mean, you really have that sense of responsibility. You know, it's, you come in and you you need to carry the face of the country and be the ambassador. So I don't think the guys really need that much motivation. But like you say, I think it's important that we try and bond together and try and get unified quickly. Obviously, it's not a lot of time, but I think just reminding the guys the sense of responsibility that we have and the and the opportunity that we have. I think a lot of players now have that opportunity to put their hands up and say, "Well, look, coach, I you know I want to be part of the team." going forward and, and be involved and want to play in big tournaments like the World Cup. So I think the players, they should have their minds uh, in the right place and you know we're going to be focused and, and try and do the country proud when the, when the tournament starts for us on, on Saturday.